Hello and welcome to Numa Real. I'm your host, Damon The Real Nero. We truly have an exciting show in store for you today, and we thank you for tuning in. It is entitled A Tale of Two. It's authored and presented by yours truly, Damon The Real Nailer, copyright 2021. We're going to look at only two of the objectives today because this will be a two part series. We're going to compare and contrast Ishmael and Isaac. And we're going to analyze the covenant and promises to both Ishmael and Isaac. In Galatians 4, this is kind of an outline, and we're looking at Abraham, the father of many nations. His first son is Ishmael, the second son is Isaac. Ishmael's mother was Hagar, and Isaac's mother was Sarah. Hagar was a bond maid, Sarah was the free woman, or Abraham's wife. Ishmael was born after the flesh. Isaac was born of the promise or the spirit. Ishmael represents Mount Sinai in Arabia and Sarah represents Jerusalem. Now it's critical that we understand the comparison of these two. And as I stated, Hagar was the bond maiden and Sarah was the wife of Abraham. And if you may not know the story, I'm going to just give you a preview of it or a short number, an abbreviated form of it. What happened was that God had promised Sarah and Abram that they would bring forth a son. As time passed, they felt as though it was too late and she wouldn't have a child. So what she did, she got her handmaiden or the bondmaid, which was Hagar, and she allowed Abram to impregnate Hagar. Well, what ended up happening years later, when Abraham was 100, Sarah was 90, God visited them and she had a baby, which was Isaac. And though that decision for them to go ahead and impregnate Hagar instead of waiting on God so Sarah could be impregnated has some implications that are affecting us here this day. But it's important that we understand that concept. You know, Isaac was the promise. Ishmael was of the flesh, okay? Keep that in mind. So what we're going to look at now are the prophecies to Ishmael and the prophecies to Isaac. So this is what God prophesied over Ishmael. And this can be found in Genesis 16 and 17. He promised to multiply his seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. He would bless him and make him fruitful, multiply his seed exceedingly. He would beget 12 princes and he will be made a great nation. He will be a wild man, meaning he will be a defiant and defying rules. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand will be against him, always fighting and in conflict. When you think about it, you think of the terrorists, they fit that description. He shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. What people don't understand is that Abram, Abraham had another wife after Sarah died named Keturah, Keturah, who birthed him more children. So she had Zimran, Jachan, Madan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. And Ishmael dwelt among them, and they were mostly separate from Isaac. All of them and their descendants formed the Arabian Peninsula or the Arab people, who are known to be predominantly Islamic and Muslim. It is of the essence that we understand that concept. So we had Isaac, which was the chosen seed, but then we had Ishmael. And then when Abraham married the, the other wife after Sarah had died, Keturah, then she ended up having children. And what happened, Ishmael ended up growing up around them. And he was, he, he associated more with them. And Isaac was separated because he was the promised seed and he was alone by himself with his family and everything. And what ended up happening, these people, Ishmael and the rest of his brothers, his descendants, they formed the Arabian Peninsula or the Arab world. And we know that the predominant faith is Islam. So we need to make sure we're capturing and, and comprehending this information, all right? So then here's the, prom the prophecies and the promises to Isaac, the one who was born after the promise, after the spirit. God promised him the everlasting covenant. And what is that? God will be a God to his seed. He will multiply them, make a great nation out of them, bless them that bless them, and curse them that curse them. He will give to his seed the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, 
and he would establish the everlasting covenant with him and his seed. This is so vital that we understand this. So this is the promise to Isaac. We read the ones, all the information for Ishmael, but now it's to Isaac. And what we have to understand, notice it said God was going to be a God to his seed. God was going to give him the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. He was going to establish that everlasting covenant with him, which is Isaac. All right. So then God set up a token or a sign of the covenant. This can be found in Genesis 17 verses 10 through 12. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your seed after you. Every man child among you shall be circumcised and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And that shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. He that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child of your generations. He that is born in a house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So this covenant, this token, this sign was between Abraham and God. And this was the, the circumcision, or the circumcision of the flesh, which a lot of people still do today. But this came about as a covenant between God and Abraham. So this was the sign of it. He was going to circumcise each male. And if you notice, I have to emphasize when. Eight days old. Remember that. So let's compare the circumcision of Isaac, the circumcision of Ishmael, Genesis 17 and 21. So in Ishmael, I'm sorry, Genesis 17, verse 25, this is where Ishmael gets circumcised. He was 13 years old when he was circumcised, which signifies that he did not fulfill the official rule and requirement of the covenant, thus disqualifying him from being the chosen seed. Get that, remember, the covenant said that the child had to be eight days old. Now he formally, just as a formality, everybody had to get circumcised. Remember, because there were older people there, of course, at that time, Abraham himself was old. But the, the, the point of the covenant, God said the child had to be eight years old. So because Ishmael was 13, he was disqualified. Now let's check out Isaac. Genesis 21 and 4, Isaac was eight days old when he was circumcised, thus fulfilling the rule and statute of the covenant and qualifying him to be the chosen seed. Mm -mm -mm. That's so powerful. Because Ishmael was 13 and God put that statute in the covenant that the child had to be eight years old, he was automatically disqualified. And that therefore by default, Isaac would be qualified because he was circumcised as the, at the appropriate time. And it's amazing God and his infinite wisdom, how he put that little bitty fine print in there, that little bitty statute, that little bitty requirement that qualified Isaac, but disqualified Ishmael. All right. And we're going to get more into the rest of this in the next episode. Just wanted to, to give you a little appetizer there, a little appetizer to get you, get you all excited and ready because we're going to look at this a little more. And you're going to get some more revelation on this. We but thank you for tuning in. Hope that you enjoyed it. God bless. Get the word out. Hit that subscribe button and invite people to check out Numa Real. Take care.